Good day guys! Today, we shall continue the series of lecture videos for criminal law. Ang mga lecture videos na ito shall only be short, yet compact, and direct to the point. We shall only cover the salient topics and provisions of the Revised Penal Code, various jurisprudence, doctrines, principles, and selected special penal laws. This lecture series can actually be used by criminology, political science, and legal management students. However, all students who are taking up criminal law and all those who want to learn about the criminal laws are very welcome here in our lecture series. For this lecture video, we shall discuss the generality characteristic of criminal law. So, let us now start our discussion. Actually, there are three characteristics of criminal law, one of which is generality. Article 14 of the Civil Code provides that penal laws and those of public security and safety shall be obligatory upon all who live or sojourn in the Philippine territory subject to the principles of public international law and to treaty stipulations. This is where the generality principle is derived from. The generality principle then mandates that our penal system shall operate to all people who commit a crime here in the Philippines. Hence, even if the offender is a foreigner, our penal laws shall be applicable to him. He shall be brought to the court, his case shall be tried, and the judgment shall be rendered upon him. Examples of which are the arrest of 43 foreigners who were involved in kidnapping in 2017. Also, in the same year, three foreigners were arrested for ATM scheming in Pampanga. And who would not remember the Chinese student who was charged with direct assault dahil sinabuyan niya ng taho ang isang police sa MRT noong 2019. All of these instances manifest the generality principle of our penal laws. However, there are exceptions in the generality principle because clearly Article 14 of the Civil Code provides that it is subject to principles of public international law and treaty stipulations. Also, law of preferential application is a recognized exception to the principle of generality. We shall now discuss them one by one. First is the principle of international law. According to this exception, penal laws are not obligatory to the following. First, sovereigns. Second, heads or chiefs of states. Third, ambassadors. Fourth, ministers plenipotentiary. Fifth, Ministers residents, six charge the affair, and seven consular officers, but only for acts performed in the exercise of their function. Meaning, if the acts performed are not in the exercise of their function, then they are not immune to criminal prosecution. Second exception. Laws of preferential application. Let me give you a good example for this exception. Article 349 of the Revised Penal Code punishes bigamy. However, this provision is not applicable to Muslims who are married in accordance with the Muslim laws. Particularly, itong presidential decree 1083 or the Code of Muslim Personal Laws. This goes to show that P 
PD 1083 is a law of preferential application. Now, to sum it up, you should always remember that the principle of generality holds that our penal laws are applicable to all people, including the foreigners who are living or sojourning here in the Philippines. However, the penal laws may not operate under the principles of public international law and treaty stipulation and the law of preferential application. So, this ends our discussion for the generality principle of the criminal law. I am Ian Gonzalez telling you, alamin natin ang batas upang hindi tayo mamuhay ng marahas. See you again next time. Thank you and God bless.